We built a cabinet for our drum sander. Do not want to cut through our assembly table that we spent a lot of time making. Fiberboard. Set our depth. That should do it-ish. Ear pro, because we gotta protect <laughs> what little bit of hearing I got left. Lisa Tunes, if you're watching, we love you. All right, let's cut. We have an extra foot, so I think, it's not even a thing, I know what we're gonna do. I say we use that foot to our advantage. We gotta do two cuts. So we'll do, we do two at 36, then we can make sure it's square by cutting off on both sides. Okay. When we move into the smaller shop, I'm not gonna be able to do that anymore. Okay, so here's the deal. I had an idea. We've never really branded our stuff. I mean, we did, we did it on the cleat wall, but I thought, since we have the next wave HD520 has a laser. So what do you think if I hop on Vetric real quick, do a laser pattern, and we laser a ghost image of our logo on this? That'd be awesome. I like that. Yeah, that's cool. But it's probably gonna take like four hours to burn. So. No, that's our dust collection actually. What? <laughs> Finally slowing down. Probably, probably should check. I probably should check the bearing on that. Since it's gonna, it, it could take a while, let's get this set up and then we'll come back and do the rest of the cuts and then we can start banding and everything. Cool. Cool, all right. All right, so you know what I kind of like about this? It's not even a kind of like, like I totally like, is that they give you an efficiency rating, 83.4%. This whole project to build the case is one sheet of plywood. So depending on where you are in the country and what's going on with supply, this is a reasonably inexpensive build, right? This is our waste right here. And I wouldn't even call any of this waste. I mean, we can make jigs out of this, spacer blocks, all sorts of stuff. So while the other letter A, <laughs> today's cutting's been brought to you by the letter A. Let's mark everything so that we don't mess it up. Do I have two Bs or not two Bs? Do you think at some point people will realize that I pay you to put up with my jokes? <laughs> I wanna match it like everything we do here with oak and sapili trim for banding because it's just it's our theme, it's everywhere. Juice box. What's in my mug? Water coffee, liquid IV, or rum and coke. Winner gets a mug. Everything's cut, we gotta do all of our banding. So we need eight at 15. Let's go cut these on the chop saw. Four at 34 and a half. Alrighty, so we've got everything cut. Everything is marked with the exception of the edge banding sapili, but it's actually cut to perfect length except for the verticals. And so we're gonna band everything. Before we get to banding stuff though, pro tip, sapili, oily woods and such, you wanna make sure that you're cleaning that off with some acetone. You don't need a lot, little goes a long way. Freshly cut oily wood, glue won't hold. So we'll wipe everything down really, really quickly. There's a lot of different ways to handle the edge banding. A lot of people actually take painter's tape, they'll put the glue on, they'll They'll take their edge banding, they'll then wrap it with the painter's tape, which you can do and then you leave it overnight. I take a different approach, pin nails. From that perspective, if you have a pin nailer or a brad nailer, when you go ahead and you edge band it, if you take the pin nailer or the brad nailers and we do alternating patterns back forth to each other, it acts as a clamp. We still gotta let it sit overnight to fully cure, but with the pin nails and the glue, after about a half hour, 45 minutes, we can actually move on with assembling this if we want to. That being said, Kendall's gonna tell you it's like almost five o'clock and she wants to go home, so we're gonna wait till tomorrow anyway. Like, did you know that pin nails actually are covered in a glue so that when you shoot them through whatever you're shooting them into, the friction created melts the glue and acts as a binding agent to keep the pin nail in place. 
Okay, with everything glued up, it's time to make everything flush. And there's probably like 15 different ways to do this. We're really, really lucky in our shop because we do, we have a plethora of tools. And then it dawned on me, maybe I should give you a couple options. Obviously, option number one is gonna be the random orbit sander. Um, it doesn't matter what brand you have, but typically, especially with Sapili, which is a hardwood, but it's kind of on the softer side of hardwood, it sands really, really well and really, really easy at 80 grit. Option number two, if you have one and you happen to be handy with it, a block plane. This works out really well because you can take small little slivers off at a time and then eventually you get to a point where you're just level with the plywood. Same thing applies though. I get it really, really, really close and then I hit it with the 80 grit and the 120. Option number three, if you're blessed like we are, is a drum sander. You can run this through the drum sander while you're sipping your coffee and just have everybody on the internet hate you for it. But it's definitely time efficient and not gonna lie to you, that's usually our go-to, and then we finish it up at 120 on the random orbit, and we're done. Last but not least is going to be a palm router with a flush trim bit. You can do that, you can put this in a vise. I don't do that because there's really not that much to take away, but I would be amiss if I didn't tell you that as an option. So probably about 30, 35 minutes, we'll have all these pieces together, and then it's time to start pocket screwing the carcass together. So let's get to sanding. We put aside a piece to laser, so I'll be placing that on the laser. That doesn't mean that I can't start assembly because once assembly is started and I have the carcass kind of where it is, I can then build the drawers. And even though the drawers are in SketchUp and you can buy these plans on our website, you always want to build the carcass before you build the final drawers because if you build them based on the plan, I mean, we all make mistakes when we cut, right? And then you're going to be angry and then you're going to say the plans are wrong. And then... but that being said, we're gonna pocket screw this. That's what we do with all our shop furniture. The reason we went with this design is because, if you can imagine, this is almost like a joist, like a floor joist, because we have the weight of the drum sander sitting on top of here. So we can get this going this way, and then you know what? We'll pocket screw going this way as well. That'll hold the sides, the top and the bottom. I guess hopefully the whole thing won't fall apart then. Now you're gonna measure up. One down, 50 to go. Glue isn't really always necessary with pocket screws. I mean, the truth is though, the glue has more holding power than the pocket screw. All right, so I had this idea. We we're building three set, well, four sets of drawers. The drawers are gonna hold sandpaper for the drum sander and other sanding, and then the, the trays are just there for extra sanders that we have around the shop that don't necessarily fit on the cleat wall, right? So I had this thought, you know, in the last project, we did dados on the RS-1000 that Next Wave sent us to see if we could do dados. And then I thought maybe we would do box joints for the drawers. The one thing we figured out with our tests is that when we try to do box joints off camera, if using plywood, the plywood just kind of blew apart because of its layers. So I mean, we've got all these layers here and as the spinning router bit, it just was a messy look. So we've got some poplar sitting over there that has been sitting in the shop for a long time. So why don't we make a couple drawers, learn how to do box joints on the RS-1000 and then when we run out of poplar, we'll just make the rest out of plywood, which is how it is on the plans that you can get on our website. And we're all ready to make box joints. 3.16.512. We have our Ear Pro. Thank you, Isotunes. iPro, Tafasi, no sponsors, just really big fans. Test fit. Booyah. Yay. That looks really good. I really like that. That looks really good.
Yeah, so this was a really, really good and easy burn. 50% at 150 inches a minute, and we've got a logo. We're gonna make sure the logo is actually on the outside of the cabinet. We're gonna check that like six times before we actually pocket screw this thing together. Gotta build the drawers, so. Okay, one of the things we wanted to make sure that we did when we built this cabinet was learn more about the RS-1000. That next wave was super, super nice to send us. Make sure you check that video out. Um, we've got a video of the unboxing. We also have a video where we built the router cabinet going with the RS-1000. So last time we did dados, this time we did box joints. And because of doing the box joints, I had some poplar laying around. We did learn through some earlier testing that doing box joints on a router on the RS-1000 is not ideal with plywood because the ply tends to come apart. So we use poplar. So we've got these poplar drawers. By now you know we've actually made the box joints. And you know what? They're really tight, but they came out really, really well. And again, it's a repetitive thing that I could do over and over and over again. And it doesn't really get any better than that. Now I'm gonna put this drawer together. The rest we're just gonna pocket screw because it's easy. I know, right? Seriously. I put the wrong side on. <laughs> Our drawer fronts are six inches. We know that. We need a quarter inch reveal for movement front to back. What I did was I went over the table saw, I cut these six and a half inch shims that I'm going to put right here and I'm going to clamp. Now this is a growing moment for me because I would not normally do this. Normally, I would honestly say screw it, make a pencil mark and see if it works. And much to your entertainment, screw it up 20 different times. I don't feel like doing that today. So I made a jig. That's one, two, three. Every time we build a cabinet, I always forget to put these on before before we put the cabinet together. Craft sticks, which are not by any such means dimensionally correct, they tend to be a sixteenth of an inch at a piece, which means that four of them make a quarter of an inch. Ta-da. I am impressed with the RS-1000 with the box joints. I didn't really dial them in like I should, and that is my fault, not next waves. But if you sit down and think about it, we banged them out pretty freaking quick. I mean, it was just once the settings were done, they were done. Just like the Dados from a repeatable piece of equipment, and they fit the first time. Next wave now two, Scott, zero. All right, wheels. With the wheels on, all we've got left to do is we wanna take the drum sander off of the old metal cart, mount it to here, and then fill in the drawers and it's done. Okay, so this thing is 16 and a half inches long. So three and five eighths, and then we've gotta go nine and a quarter. So if I come off of that line and I go to two, two and a quarter, two and a quarter, that's hole number one. Two and a quarter, right? Mm -hmm. So now we have a choice and we always do this to ourselves. And when I say we, I don't really mean we like the team, I mean me, because I just don't learn. I could get the router out and make slots just like is on the old base. 
But where's the fun in that? I say, go for gusto. Kendall is gonna sit there and go, oh God, here we go again. True story, right? Yeah. I elongated just a little bit, just in case. We have a really important decision. Do we want the logo facing the pit, which means it's the back, or facing where you're standing? I answered it. Don't give me that look. I mean, it could have gone worse. It could have gone That wasn't too bad. This is a really, really simple build that anybody can do in their shop to have a really nice cart to put underneath your drum sander. Don't forget, you can get the plans. The link is down in the description. But one of the things I really liked about it was also engaging the RS-1000, which allowed us to make those box joints. Uh, remember, Next Wave sent us that device to give it a try, and so far it has definitely impressed us here in the shop on the things that it can do repetitively. Don't forget you can get these plans on our website, www.craftywiener.com, and we will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.